you get to choose. A life with magic or a life without. I choose magic. Hey there, it's Deb D, your host of You Are The Magic, the show that is supporting you in connecting to that magic within you. Through storytelling, magic activations, solo episodes and special guest speakers, we are going to explore the magical realm and how you can anchor into magical you in grounded, practical, let's make it real and a part of your everyday type of magic. My intention and hope is that by listening to the episodes, you will access this magic inside you so that each day and in every breath, you anchor into that truth. Because it is true, my friend, you are the magic. Welcome, my friends, to today's episode of You Are The Magic, where we are going to step further and deeper into the evolution of you. But first I want to ask, have you ever received a message from the universe or your own intuition that was clear and you were clearly a no? No, I am not going that way. Because this happens, this happens to us all. We're living these beautiful intuitively led lives and we're welcoming guidance from the universe around the best path for ourselves. And then sometimes you get given a navigation point and you're an absolute, I don't think so, I am not going that way. That's what we're exploring today. Because all season long, we're exploring this idea of your magical mindset and connecting to your intuition and evolving the story of you and your big, beautiful, magical life and how you do that and what might get in your way and all of the bits and pieces that make up this beautiful myriad of experiences that make up your big life magic, your intuitively led life. When we began this season, I started with a little teaser. I teased a little bit of an opening story about being with Sage's 22nd birthday and feeling, I'm okay. I'm okay. And something opened up for me that day. It was a clear evolution point in my story. And I on purpose left the story right there because I wanted to get into this idea of evolution of story and intuition with myself and the other special guests that we've had so that we can arrive at this point, this episode, where I talk about the evolution of this story and those moments when the universe is going to give you a directive, go that way, and you're, oh, no. I don't think so. And that might be a no because it makes no sense. It might be a no because you don't know how that's going to play out and it feels scary. Or it might be a no because deep in your feelings, your earthbound self, you're like, I don't feel like I could do that, let alone want to do that. So for you, it might be something like I've been working for years at a particular job, I'm working up the ladder, I'm going for the next promotion, I'm so close to getting to where I want to be and have worked out for years. And then you're hearing these intuitive hits around shifting jobs, maybe starting your own business. And you're like, why would I do that? Why would I do that when I am so close to getting what I want? But the intuitive message seems clear, makes no sense, right? Or you connect to somebody, you connect to a new somebody and it feels good, the connection is immediate, you've been looking for somebody and now here's that somebody, they're right there. And intuitively, deep down, those little red flags are waving, I don't think so, be careful. 
but you just really want to stay close to this person. So what do you do then? Follow your feelings or follow this intuitive red flag? This absolutely happens in the evolution of our stories because as shared in a previous episode, the universe and your intuition, which is connected to your higher I am presence, knows the whole map. They know exactly where you're going and you don't know that whole map. You know only where you are and where you're shown next. And sometimes it doesn't make sense. So sometimes what we can do is actually stall or tread water at a navigation point because we're a no, no universe, I don't want to go that way, even though it is in your highest good, it is a clear directive. It's a very human moment. And I just want to bring this forward before we go into the storytelling. Let's all just take a big deep breath and say there is maybe no right or wrong way to evolve, that it's all pathways of learning and loving and knowing I don't want to fall into this pattern of you're doing your magic right or you're doing your magic wrong. I don't believe that. And I also believe what is meant for you will not pass you by. It will come by more than one way. And the universe can rearrange things waiting for you to be ready. It can send you more information when you need it. So we're just going to also be okay with where we are on our journey because I think that that element is what actually supports us to evolve, even if we're not ready to step forward or we don't understand the directive. So today I'm going to share a story which actually began for me in 2020. And oh, hello, how many stories began for us all in 2020? It was the big game changer year. It was a pivotal year for all of us across the globe and for me there was a big story big evolution of me story that began in 2020 and the way that I'm going to share this story is through patches I'm going to share with you the patch of when I got some intuitive guidance and my response to it and then we're going to move to the next patch and we're going to go patch by patch and the reason I'm choosing to share the story in this way is because it mirrors what your intuition and universal guidance is doing. You will be given that little piece of information you need at that point in time. You're not always given the whole scene, the whole narrative, and we're asked to just dig into a whole heap of trust sometimes in our stepping forward. So that's why I'm going to share the story in this way, like intuitive hit by intuitive hit, patch by patch. And I'm going to invite this for you to also be in your own reflection, either while listening to the story or in your own reflection after listening to this story around how your intuition and universal guidance is coming through for you patch by patch. And maybe this has happened already and you can see the whole narrative as it played out. Or maybe you're currently in a story where you've got a couple of patches, but you need a few more before the story and the evolution is clear. Whatever may be, there is a narrative here for you also, because this is how our evolutions roll out, my friends. It's not one big roll. It's chapter by chapter, patch by patch, intuitive message by intuitive hit. This is what happens and sometimes it can take weeks, months or as my story is about to share with you, years. So the evolution story, the next chapter, picking up from our teaser and we begin in August 2020. I'm in Barbados, I'm here for my second day now, my second day of quarantine and my old life is now literally behind me. I have left my Brooklyn apartment. I've sold or packed up all of my things because I am starting a brand new story. I have chosen to leave the city behind and make my way towards my love and his island, and we're going to begin our big, beautiful life together. 
because 2020 has shown us we want to be together and I'm moving in that direction, which lands me here in Barbados, not Tobago, in quarantine. For the borders to Trinidad and Tobago are firmly shut, and so I have made the move to get closer to Tobago, as close as I can, which is Barbados, where those borders are open. And here I am in quarantine, not knowing how long I'm going to be in Barbados once released from quarantine, and just kind of settling into the big shift of my life. I no longer live in New York City. I'm now in quarantine in the Caribbean, in the middle of a global pandemic. What's going to happen next? A friend of mine shares that she's available to give me a distance healing and maybe it would be a good idea because of the big shifts happening in my life. And so I say, yes, please, I would love a distance healing. So I sleep that night in my hotel room in my quarantine and I wake the next morning to a message from my friend, the healer, who says, the message that's coming through is this, you are moving in the right direction. A new story is beginning. There is a new voice on its way, but it's not here yet, for it can't get through. I receive that and I'm like, that kind of makes a little bit of sense. Like I'm obviously in a new story. I've just moved from the city to the Caribbean. I, before leaving the city, decided to start building my new business, Big Life Magic. It's going to launch soon. So that's, that's a new story too. This new voice, what is that new voice? Is that the voice is going to come through my, my speaking or my business? Like that doesn't seem to make sense. And why can't it come through? I've got no idea. And I just know that in time I will know. Patch two. I'm now settled in my studio by the sea in Barbados. It is weeks and weeks later and it's very clear that board is not opening anytime soon so I just settle into being here and get busy building my business Big Life Magic because it's going to launch soon. And I'm speaking to another healer friend of mine and we're having a conversation and at the end of it she says, well, you know what, Deborah, it's your evening and you're about to go to bed and here in Australia it's my morning and I've got the morning clear so would you like me to give you a healing? I'm like, okay, great. Yes, please, I'll take it because I'm still settling into this global pandemic. I'm now living in the Caribbean, but not the right island to me. Yes, please. I fall asleep. I wake up the next morning. The healing has happened overnight and I receive a message from my healing friend that says, you are moving in the right direction. The new story has begun. There is a new voice getting through but you are blocking it. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, that, that is a clear double magic message. Two different healers, same message, not very far apart in time. That's clearly a message for me. I can understand the new story because I feel like I'm in it, this new voice. I actually don't know what it is and I'm blocking it. What? No, I'm aligned with my magic. I'm not a block. I wouldn't do that. Patch three. It's been a few days now since that double magic message coming through and my curiosity is now itching. What? You're saying I'm blocking it? I don't think I do that, universe, so let's have a direct conversation about that. I go into a meditation with the intention of clearly asking the universe, tell me about this voice and where's the block? Because I'm, I'm willing to clear it, surely. I go into the meditation and deep into the meditation, I ask clearly, please tell me clearly. I am open and ready to hear it. What is the voice? What is the block? And I hear clearly. You are available to be a channel for many voices, but you are currently blocking that channel. You are too closely connected to your son, Sage, in spirit. We ask you now to release him further into spirit. See now your son, Sage, as not your son. See him as a spirit. 
release him, release your son. And as I'm hearing this message, like my heart breaks again. My womb is literally like pulsing and it's like deeply painful and I'm like there's angry sobs coming out because I come out of that meditation and my response is this, fuck no, I'm not doing it. No universe, you already took my son from earth realm. We've worked on getting some great communication in the spirit realm and no, I'm just a no, I am not letting him go further. I can't. And now it's clear what the block is. It's the mother in me. I'm not ready to let go. Patch four. It's now early 2021, around March. I've been in Mexico for a few months because the frustration of that Trinidad Tobago border not opening has me move across the globe to connect with another friend. But now I've moved to another part of Mexico and I'm trying to figure out my life. Everything feels like it's kind of working but not working at the same time. Like my business is now launched and that's feeling good. But I, I, I don't feel good. Everything feels heavy and I don't know the way forward. And so I invite a distance healing from my friend. And she says, absolutely, I will give you the healing while you sleep. I wake the next morning to a message from my friend. And she says, no wonder you feel heavy. You have been mothering the world. Everybody you're connecting to, everybody in your family, everybody in your, in your love network, Everybody who you are working with through your business, you are holding all of their energy. You are mothering everyone. You are holding everyone so close. Oh, I see what I've done. The universe has asked me to let the mother in me go, to let Sage go, and I'm months and months into that message. And not only am I now blocking it, I have decided to go the other direction and mother the whole world. No wonder things are not adding up. And so I let go and I release into, okay, the mother in me should not and really should not be trying to mother the whole world. I know that as a healer. I can let that go. But I know in that moment I'm still not ready to let Sage, my son, go. And so I surrender into I'm not ready, but I know one day I will be. Patch five. It's New York City and it's now 2023, May 5th. 2023. The borders have opened. I've moved into my life in Tobago. We are building that life. Things are definitely moving forward in my business. And today is a special day for its Sage's birthday. It's Sage's 21st birthday. All day long, I spend time alone in the city. And all day long, there is a river running down my face. And it's not sadness. It's this release that I haven't felt before. It just keeps releasing further and further. And I tune into my son in earth years 21. Like he's officially grown up now, right? So what does that mean for the mother in me? Is now the time to begin to let go? And the river keeps running. That night I connect with some beloved friends and we share stories of 21 and we honour this day and I feel the mother in me relax. The next morning I wake up with a deep knowing. I am allowed to graduate now. I am ready. You can let go now, Deborah. Patch six. There's been threads and threads of the patches over the year that led from the 21st birthday of Sage to the 22nd birthday of Sage. It's the 5th of May again, and I am okay. I feel okay. In the last year, I have started to tune more and more into 
what do I want? Not what do I need to let go of, but what am I inviting in? And I tune into this voice and I'm like, yes, that's true. I do actually want to hear more of what spirit has to say because I want to share that through my writing and my speaking and my teaching. And I open up to the mother in me is allowed to let go. Sage is fine. I am fine. But that night on Sage's 22nd birthday, and I'm... I'm proud of myself. I've, I've survived 11 death days. I've now made it to this transformation from my big life loss to my big life magic and I'm sitting in it and I'm still missing that voice of sage. I'm like, I have learnt to let go. I am exploring who are you now? But I question, where are you now? How can I connect to you now? And I'm sitting outside and I'm journaling and I'm listening to some music and this song that has been on repeat for weeks leading up into this day, the song is Breathe. And in the song it says, I just want to know if you're okay. And then I click in, I was like, is that Sage sending me a different type of message rather than the direct line that I'm used to? Is it coming through the song? Is Sage telling me I'm okay, he's okay, this message that has been repeated now for 11 years, is that it? And yes, it drops into my heart. There it is. It's not the same vibration. It's not the same way that I connect to Sage, but there it is. It's a new connection. He's found a new way. And as soon as I accept and open to that, that's when the new voice arrives. And to my surprise, it's not one voice, it's many voices. For the Spirit of Sage is now in a collection of entities, a collection of light workers that are ready to begin to speak to me. For the new voice is being birthed now. So my friends, in the evolution of me, you can see I did not surrender easily. I was an absolute no more than once to the universe. And what I want to glean out of this story for us all is this. The evolution of you can be any part of you. Like for me as a spiritual teacher, I invite the evolution of what I can hear through my intuition. What, what value can I bring through my teaching? This is something that I invite. The evolution of you may be about forgiveness of a family member or something that happened to you. Or the evolution of you may be a bigger narrative around why you continue to have the same type of love affairs or why success and abundance feels like a struggle for you. There's big narratives in all of our beautiful lives and you have your own. And to now see that narrative as this patchwork of how it's evolved, it does. Sometimes it can take a while and sometimes we will resist it or sometimes we're not ready. And this is what I want you to know. You do not have to rush or force or push your evolution because when you are ready, you will know, you will feel it. You will also feel if you're being too resistant. You also feel that too when you're kind of like the petulant kid stamping your feet. We can feel that too. But know this about these big navigation points that our intuition gives us. When they are aligned with the direction for us. The universe has a lot of patience. If you're not ready, the universe will be, okay, let me just reroute, kind of like a GPS. Let me, let me turn in a different direction. Because there's many points in the story between when I released and when that new voice came through. 
which in a future episode I am going to be going into detail about because there's a lot there to be explored about how we can begin to invite the evolution when we know we're ready for it. But if you receive a directive from the universe and you're a clear no, like I was, then no, magic maker, you can honour that no. Just because the universe says go that way, it doesn't mean you have to jump today. I'm not saying to tread water and resist. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying the universe doesn't get the final say. You do. It's your life and the universe and your intuition and your spirit tribe are here to support you. Because I can see in my story, in 2020, it was global pandemic and I was moving around the world. Like I was one of the crazy people on and off planes during COVID 2020 and 2021. My sister Kathy was also actively in her warrior journey at the end of her cancer journey and we knew that it was getting towards the end. I waited for months and months and months for the borders to open, for me to be reunited with my beautiful loved one. And then we chose to get married. Then we start a residency process. Like there's a lot that's happened in 2020 and 2021. And then in 2022, my sister Kathy surrendered her journey. I'm building my business. So you can see how much is happening. And so it's okay to take your time to know when you are ready. But what you want to do is you want to tune into Am I resisting or am I aligning? Because in Mexico, when I received the message again that I was mothering the whole world, I could let go of that because I knew that that was not useful and I really did need to let that go. But I also knew I'm not ready. I'm not yet connected to my love. I haven't settled into our new life. I don't know how many chapters left my sister Kathy has the pandemic is still happening. I wasn't ready. So you get to choose when you move in your navigation points. And if you do get a no from the universe, like you get a, the universe gives you a wink and you, you respond with a no, which is what I meant, you want to be curious about that no. Is it no? Because my first no in Barbados was an absolute no, I'm not doing that took me a while to peel down and realise, okay, the universe is actually on my side. There's something here I can't see. I know that as a magic maker. So there's a softening there. If you do get a no, I invite just ease, breath and curiosity into that no and an anchoring into, thank you, universe, for showing me the navigation point. I'm going to take that under advisement and I know you will continue to advise me, but I want to feel what is best for me now. Because know this, no matter which way your story evolves, none of them are right or wrong. It's all journeys forward into learning more about love and yourself. And how can you go wrong if you're still learning if you're still living and breathing, let go of the idea that maybe we're going to make a wrong move and anchor into, I decide the move. The universe is my navigator. My intuition is going to be my inner guidance system. But the evolution of my story, it's mine. Because when you are ready, you will step in. And if you choose to step in a different direction, then Magic Maker, your story is just going to evolve in a whole different way. So when you next get a directive from the universe and you're like, oh, oh no, where can you find the deeper breath and the curiosity in that no? And where can you give yourself full permission to find your yes? 
Every episode of You Are The Magic is dedicated. And this dedication, it may seem a little bit strange to some, but it makes perfect sense to me. On Sage's birthday, when I was easing into the day, I found myself moving towards somewhere that gives me deep grounding and comfort. And that is the sheep farm that we have here in Tobago. My husband and I, we have a beautiful flock of sheep that we absolutely adore. And when I'm with them, I can feel really just everything simple. You hang out with the sheep and you see everything simple. You just want to eat the grass, you want to drink the water, you want to find the shade, and when you need to go to sleep, you cuddle next to somebody in your family. And so I want to dedicate this episode to our sheep because it was in their company standing in the sheep farm on Sage's birthday on the 5th of May this year that I was able to actually own it. I'm okay. I have let go and I am okay in their company. And guess what? They didn't really care. They're just living their simple lives, but they were there, witness to that moment. So I dedicate this episode to our beautiful sheep and I want to invite you. Is there an animal? Is there a tree? Is there a river? Is there someone or something in your life that is not human that gives you grounding or comfort? that helps you in the trickier navigation points of our big stories and send a little bit of love that way right now. So my friends, deep, big deep breath in. I hope you have some time to reflect on your own patches of intuitive hits with the evolution of your story. I want to invite now, if there is any way that I can support you in navigating that journey, understanding any of these intuitive hits. What is the universe trying to bring to me? I invite you to reach out to me. We can connect and explore what is possible for you. And I want you to anchor into knowing no matter where you are in the evolution of your story, just imagine this for today. You are exactly where you need to be because it's you, my friend. You are the magic. Thank you for spending your time and your magic with me in the latest episode of You Are The Magic. I invite you now to click the link for a tune. It's a five-day intuition activation, which means over five days, you will receive an audio activation from me which is going to support you in tuning your intuition, your magical insight, the magical language that lives within you and connects you to our divine, glorious universe. Because I believe it. If we are all connected to our intuition, then we're all in ease, fun, play in the magical realm. And that's where your big life magic lives. Other ways to stay connected to me and Big Life Magic is all available to you on the website, biglifemagic.com. There you'll find the links and information for the Big Life Magic Makers, our virtual community for women. You may choose to join the membership. We would be delighted to welcome you. Plus, there's more information about working one-on-one -on -one with me or joining a new moon circle, which is available every new moon open to anyone across the globe who wishes to join us there's so many ways that we can connect together and connect to your magic and i invite you to say yes to that now i'm also going to ask this if this episode or this show has inspired you or changed anything in your world i would deeply appreciate a review on the platform that you're watching or listening on for I believe when we share and elevate each other, our magic expands. And this is what I wish for us all. So breathe it in now, my magical friend. Breathe it in and smile, for it's true. 
you, you my friend, are the magic. <laughs>